to know. Yeah. All right, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of this morning conversation. My name is Ram Aguko. It is a pleasure being with you on this fine Monday morning. Of course, this is why in the morning. Welcome back. If I told you just joining us, it's all about youth and politics that we want to discuss on this particular Monday morning. And of course, we value your feedback. It is the 2nd of May 2022. We are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya, also streaming live through our website that's at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254 we value your feedback engage with us the hashtag is y in the morning at ramaguko at stephanie ayeta and at y254 channel which is the official station handle now this morning we want to talk about matters concerning you current affairs and uh, politics and of course we shall uh, dissect what has been taking trends in the past few days and of course uh, taking a look at uh, what they mean the political ramifications of uh, what we have been seeing taking center stage with me i am with my fantastic guest of course to my far right uh, Dennis Maguta, a governance expert and political analyst. Karibu sana, Dennis. Asante You're well? Thank you. Asante sana. Maybe you. Yeah, mimi peni kwa salama. Yeah. Nashukuru. God, God is good. Uh, God is all the time. All the time. <laughs> God is good. Yes. And of course, next to me, Alvin Mokaya, a senatorial aspirant for Nyamira County and a political analyst. Karibu sana, Alvin. Asante sana. Kwa salama? Nice to have you. Nice to have you too, baba. Exactly. Uh, Vitu ziko sawa. Vito siko sawa na usawa. Usawa kwa wote. <laughs> and of course, uh, based on how you, you can see already, we know where they belong. Uh, right. Exactly. Keep, keep talking to us. And of course, uh, let us know what you think about the issues that we are going to be discussing today. We shall take a look at two, polit two uh, uh, newspapers today. And of course, today we are taking it up a notch right here on Y in the morning. I am with the Daily Nation. The standard newspaper. We are taking a look at what is uh, taking trend on these two particular newspapers. And of course, on the front page of the Daily Nation is Uhuru Ruto in another public spot. That is on the front page of the Daily Nation. An ugly exchange between President Ruru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto yesterday was last evening. Uh, being interpreted as the beginning of an all-out war between the nation's topmost leaders. A hundred days to the general elections. We shall take a look at that. And of course, that particular uh, similar story is on the standard newspaper. Uhuru to Ruto, you should have resigned. That's what Uhuru says to Ruto. You should have resigned. And of course, President uh, takes hard, hard line position against his deputy accusing him of uh, ad, uh, abdicating duty and criticizing a government he is part of. But Ruto says those appointed uh, to do his job are to blame for the mess. We shall take a look at that. But first things first, uh, before we take a look at that and much more, let's take a look at the Labor Day. And of course, uh, Labor Day was yesterday. Today, Kenyans are at home enjoying this particular holiday. It has been a very, very interesting five-day holiday. <laughs> Imagine. Mira shukuru mungu for Kenya. And of course, let's talk about the, the, the uh, uh, Labor Day. And of course, uh, happy Labor Day to all of you and of course to you guys also here in the studio. Thank you. Uh, the president Thank has uh, directed that salaries and wages for the lowest paid workers be increased to cushion them from the high cost of uh, living. We are seeing an increase in the minimum wage. And of course, we are looking at uh, 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 the, the percentage which is 12%. Uh, increase in the minimum wage and of course uh, 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 this increase comes four years since the last review and i want to start with you dennis what do you think about this increase and uh, do you see it as a go you know um a, a step in the right direction i'm seeing kenyan celebrated yesterday <laughs> when this was announced dennis hey, now hey, increment of salary is okay but uh, one thing that you've seen uh, with uh, a lot of directives uh, in this uh, government, uh, especially from 2017 up to now, most of the directives are just being given verbally. 
there is no way that they follow up on the same directives. And again, um, you look at the nation, what do they need now? This, the common mwananchi. What mm. is the, the, the most basic thing that they need? Mm. Who are the, the biggest percentage? I'm not saying adding 12% was bad. In fact, that was a very good move. But you see, it only applies to the employed, to the um, uh, civil servants. But mm -hmm. uh, what about those others that are struggling? I was expecting yesterday you could have talked of uh, we, are, we are reducing the basic community prices like the, the UNGA, the FOEL, but he never touched on that. So uh, I just want to say thank you for, adding, uh, for raising the 12% minimum rate. But the most important thing is that the directive is implemented. We, we know mm. right now we are in a political season and a political campaign and anybody might say anything just to entice the eye the ears of the Mwananchi. But 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 he, the president said yesterday that he is not to be blamed for the high cost of living. No. We should but not blame him. Uh, who else do we, should we blame? Is the gov is the top governing uh, uh, individual in the governance of the country? Is the lead of the country? Is the head of state? Is the one that decides? Is the one that puts signature on many project and proposals that uh, run in the in the in the country? Mm. And if if at all there is any failure, and uh, mo of course there have been a lot of failing, uh, is the one that make the ultimate decision. So there's no way that uh, he cannot he can run away from the miseries of the country. Okay. Uh, he, he's, he's the one guy that people look up to. And he's the, he's, by the, he's the head of state. Without him, nothing can go on. So uh, when he said that uh, the, we cannot blame him, mm. I, I, I feel like we can blame him 100%. 100%. Mm. Right, um, and let me come to you, Alvin. Um, this is the president's uh, uh, move. Uh, what do you think about the president's move uh, to increase the wage? Uh, of course, this is the first since the year 2018 when he actually did uh, an increase in the average minimum uh, pay uh, where we saw a 5% increase. And of course, uh, the minimum pay to 10,096 shillings in agriculture from the current uh, of uh, uh, 9,014 is uh, what we are carrying we are saying so what do you think about this now that we are seeing a different change since 2018 <clears throat> uh, I, I think really to be honest with you um and if i start by asking you uh, maybe a rhetorical question what mm. would you do with 10,000? if you're saying you're increasing from 9,000 to 10,000 mm -hmm. um for the first time after four years i'll tell you mr president you've been sleeping on the job people are sleeping hungry People are suffering. The cost of living is too high. You you walk to any supermarket. Look at the price of cooking oil. Uh, it, it is it is now a, a golden commodity, we, which is not affordable to the common. It has become a luxury. As in to cook, have oil. Cooking has become a luxury <laughs> in our household. Now, <laughs> the president is increasing by 12%. What is 12%? Too little? You mean 12% is not enough, good enough? Too little, too late? Why did you wait for four years? You're leaving the office in the next 100 days? Really, Mr. President? I think I do respect you so much, but you owe it to this nation to look at the economy every single year of your term. And any president that is going to come after you, Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, but we look, hope he's going to look at the wealth, the economic welfare of the people every single year. Don't wait for, for election year so that you, you, you add a paltry 12% and you appease the people and you say, oh, I have done it. But, 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 but say the truth here, Alvin. We've come from a pandemic. COVID-19 struck us real hard, and not just us as a country, but the whole world. Three years have been, uh, have elapsed down the line. Three years down the line, workers have not had a review of their salary. We have come from a pandemic, but I saw the expressway, 58 billion or something, I don't know, the figures are in billions of shillings. It is it has come up during the pandemic. So where are the priorities? Mm -hmm. To create a highway from JKIA to Westlands to, to fly over the rich, 
or to caution the farmers, the, the, the small business people uh, who hold the backbone of the economy of Kenya. And that is why mm. uh, in the Usawa party, we are talking about household economic model. We are going to empower household because the Kenya Bureau of Statistics has all the statistics and we can even number the households we have in Kenya. So we focus on the households rather than ex uh, focusing on the expressways and the highways when the farmer is suffering, when the price of uh, maize is not, uh, is not commensurate to the, the, the cost of production that the farmer incurs. So we should empower that farmer. We should empower that small business person on the grassroots before we start increasing the highways and the expressways. What are we going to transport on our highways and expressways if we are not empowering the common man. I'm looking at what the president said, and of course he discovered on the uh, standard newspaper what president's 12% uh, pay hike gifts means for the low-wage workers. And of course, different people have been mentioned here. Of course, uh, me, and I'm referring to different laborers and different workers. We are looking at, uh, uh, you know, stone cutters, toy, uh, to turn boys, waiters, junior clerks, what they will be earning. It is uh, in this particular newspaper, those who are in the agriculture sector, and just to mention in the agriculture uh, sector, of course, uh, these will see the unskilled employees in the agriculture sector take home 7,000 shillings, 7,545 shillings from their current 6,736, while that of a farm clerk will rise to 14,583 shillings from 12,152 shillings. And uh, of course, the president said, and I quote, and I would like to, you to give me your thought on this, because yes, he tried and he did his best to justify the wage hike by pointing to several increases in the cost of living. And I quote, he said, as a caring government, we find that there is a compelling reason to review the minimum wages to cushion workers against further erosion of their purchasing power, while also guaranteeing the competitiveness of our economy. Meaning he has taken into, into consideration that. In fact, in 2020, the workers' real earning shrunk by 1.5%, meaning the ability to buy goods and services they had afforded in the previous year was weakened. And that's a different case right now. And, but you and see, I, uh, uh, just uh, before Dennis, you go in, yes, yes. I, I would like to also ask you, how is the government going to monitor that that uh, person employed mm. in the Wasingishu farm or Kapenguria farm down there is going to be given a wage increase? You know, yes. sometimes, as, as my colleague here said, the government is very quick to pronounce these things. But there is no one who goes around to check whether <laughs> the, 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 the farmer or mm. the clerk in that farm, ha, the, the, the wage has actually been increased. But what disturbs me more is that the backbone of our economy, which is agriculture, is attracting the lowest earning wages. Because to me, agriculture should be modernized. Agriculture should be the lucrative business and agribusiness should be what feeds our households and gives them income that can be the envy of other nations. Right. But uh. it is now very meager, okay. which is not good. That is? Okay, uh, I'd like to say, yes, he talked mm -hmm. about the, the purchasing power mm -hmm. of the now the common monainchi yeah. and uh, to, to, to boost the economy. So that means uh, the, 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 there is influx in the prices of commodities to sustain the economy. First of all, where did we go wrong? We started, uh, it, it didn't take good care at the good measures on the economical part of his governance. That is why he has to raise uh, a certain percentage. And if he, again, the 12% uh, percent was not enough to raise the purchasing power of the common Mwananchi. He was supposed to raise even by 15% or even 20% so that the purchasing power could reach where the economy has uh, the elasticity of the economy. Uh, one thing I, I like to say is the problem came in where uh, the, 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 the governance in terms of economy and all the financial issues of the country were, were, were not, uh, were not uh, uh, 
clearly monitored where we had a lot of corruption and the same money and when he says that uh, it is not his problem that the economy has, uh, ris has risen there was COVID-19 pandemic the same case he said it, it is not his fault it is not <laughs> his fault let me let me tell you okay it is not his fault that COVID-19 came but he had other measures of questioning the economy of uh, of, of the country where we had IMF, we had all the international monetary funds and all the debts that he has uh, given us. Uh, the economy should not, uh, the purchasing power of Mwananchi sh uh, should not have f uh, gone such down. Why? Because he had borrowed a lot of money. That one could have gone into subsidies, could have sustained the economy. Instead of raising the prices of, uh, of purchasing commodities, the economy could have been balanced with the money that he borrowed. But the ma all the monies that were borrowed never went into the, eco the, so, the financial so kitty. We are so saying that the 12% increment is not enough. enough. Is not enough. My is goodness. not enough. Is you, not enough. You, you, you see <laughs> now, right now, the, 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 way, the, the way my colleague has said, you cannot buy salad. You cannot. There are many, fuel is high. So when you add twelve percent to raise the purchasing power of Mwananchi to accommodate the the, the the level of the economy now, you're you're kidding to the people because you you'll find that it is only like one thousand or, or or one thousand two hundred shillings that it added on your salary, mm -hmm. and 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 so far. Uh, we we have an influx in the in the in the purchase in the uh, goods purchase prices in the in the in the, in the market. So th that is a very little amount that was added into the. Instead of doing such things, they could uh, uh, they could uh, caution the economy, the, uh, the 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 purchasing power of the of the development and uh, uh, and, the, and manufacturing industry. They could have uh, reduced the interest rate of of imports. Uh, so such so that to extend the same uh, uh, the same uh, relaxity into the into the common one mm -hmm. but you can't reduce the interest rates considering that covid struck i told you would, covid would, struck would and there was loss. ram listen covid struck but and the, the 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 counter to caution the co the the effects of the covid they borrowed money we have be, we have saw we have seen a lot of borrowing series where does the money go as much as COVID struck, yes, but there was international monetary funds that came into Kenya from WHO and many other institutions. No, the same money could have been used to sustain the economy, such so that things cannot rise. Mm. Basically, uh, what Dennis is saying and what uh, you know the, the common man is tired of is the same same old populist uh, pronouncements that cannot trickle down. Why then the government has all the machinery, uh, uh, as it were, reduced the, the, the base lending rate by the central bank, mm -hmm. make the credit affordable to yes. the small business people, and the small business people will pass this down to the consumer. As mm -hmm. it were, the cost of doing business in Kenya is one of the highest. And it, yesterday I was looking at a certain uh, uh, business analyst in, the, in one of the local televisions, and she was saying that the cost of doing business is just way wow. above the manageable levels. Mm. So why don't you then caution the business person for the business person to caution the, 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 the common one IG? The because concern. you tell them one IG have increased by 12%, the business uh, is still the cost of business product is still high the commodities uh, are gonna be high because like the price of oil is also high and and these subsidies that uh, the president keeps talking about how oh, they will enforce this they will enforce that they know how uh, fuel is being siphoned to Uganda through Kenya you know but for God's sake he has the intelligence the National Intelligence Service the, the you know the Ministry of Interior even the military deploy the military if it, it is it is going to give us solutions but Kenyans want solutions. I In believed, short, I believe, mm, and I still mm, do, uh, that this 12% increase <laughs> is a win. Is a win. It, it is a good thing. We didn't, we don't dispute that. You, you know, Ram, you need to get this. Uh -huh. We you, don't dispute you're saying, that. You're it's saying not, it is a good thing, but it's, it's not enough. Thing. You're saying it's not enough. Mm, not it, it's enough a good considering thing. where the economy is now. Yeah. And Ram, I told you, it is not enough considering that there were monies to caution the economy. The economy could not have fallen this way because <coughs> it, COVID struck, yes, but there was another way of me, cautioning the COVID, and they used that way. Let they me borrowed give an money. Example. 
So <laughs> 12 percent, you, when you add 12 percent and the commodities, uh, that, that means that from 9 to 12, that is 3 percent. But the com commodities have raised almost 30 percent. Let me where give you an example. You, you, you used to buy a liter of, of, uh, of, uh, of salad at, at 140, there it is 300. That is mm. almost 50 percent. If you are sick and you go to hospital, mm. to the hospital, and, 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 and the doctor um, sees that uh, you are in so much pain, mm -hmm. you're in so much pain, mm -hmm. and by sickness, um, by, by this body, I'm talking <laughs> about the country, mm. and the pain are the things that are ailing us. Mm. The doctor says mm. that Alvin is in mm. so much pain. Mm. Let me put him on the bed, <coughs> let him lay down for, for some time, and then I give him some, so, some drops or some injection mm. to relieve the pain. <laughs> Won't you feel better? That's Be why we're saying... Because the uh, sickness was not something you brought upon yourself. It's okay.